The beautiful thing about the internet is that it offers instantaneous access to the countless fabled stories we hear on a day-to-day -day basis. Like the story of Ricardo Milos, or the sex offender shuffle, even B.G. Cumby. All three of these tales were cemented in early internet culture amongst the teenagers and conspiracy theorists of the early 2000s. Some memes even reached to the mainstream and caused public outrage, like the Trump Tower Climber. However, there is one story that is almost completely buried and forgotten even though it caused potent levels of outrage and was even assumed to be affiliated with the terrorist organization known as Al-Qaeda. This meme single-handedly shook ABC and other TV network stations and instigated calls for drastic corrective measures against its creator. The story I'm about to tell you is the most notorious in internet history. I give you the full story of the Burt is Evil meme. Before this video starts, I'd like to give a big shout out to Vanessa Brandy for narrating it. She's definitely a staple on my channel for the narration component of my videos, so please make sure to go check out her channel and give her some love. Without any further ado, here's the complete story. The origins of the Bird is Evil meme are a little foggy, but can be traced back to Dino Ignacio in 1996. During the late 1990s, Dino was practically fresh out of high school, just 20 years old, and looking for something interesting to do with his newfound freedom. Down the road, he became utterly fascinated with the concept of the internet and practiced coding. Just to be clear though, it is unknown when his enthrallment with the internet actually started. It's also unclear if he was self-taught or learned how to use computers and write code in high school, but eventually Dino made his own website in 1996. The site was called Fractal Cow and it was used to store tons of miscellaneous concepts. For example, his site contained online comics, poetry, HTML experiments, and random weirdness. Back then, Dino's entire goal was to either create an online empire of comedic art forms or just to have a place where he could fool around and have fun. Since this was in the early days of the internet, everything on the site was barren and dry, but it served as a perfect sandbox for someone like Dino. It was in this minimalist environment that he would become notorious. Before the official creation of the Bird is Evil meme, Dino created a popular online comic series called Suicide Boy. Suicide Boy was a monthly digital comic strip that was exclusively available on Fractal Cal. The main character had compulsive suicidal tendencies, and this was the comedic punchline. There was also another creative venture of Dino's called Caddis Trophies. Basically, it was a section on Fractal Cal that was fully dedicated to showing deceased cats. As the website inevitably evolved, a multitude of users wanted to post their own stories and parody art on Fractal Cal, which they were able to and did. During one unspecified day in 1996, Dino decided to have a little fun with Photoshop and created the iconic Evil Bert picture. It's actually unknown which image is the original Dino creation, but presumably it's the one where Bert is taking a mugshot. The sole reason Dino decided to create the image in the first place was because he felt extremely bored coding the website using Hotdog, an early HTML editor. After the photoshopping was done, Dino uploaded the image to Fractal Cal where it became an instant phenomenon. Several prominent users of the website decided to follow in his footsteps and they created their own versions of Bert. I'll go over each and every one of these images in a little bit. After everything was said and done, Dino started to get a little paranoid about the potential repercussions of using an extremely iconic character and broadcasting him in a bad light. Luckily for him at the time, the Children's Television Workshop was very forgiving of this parodied version of Bert, and in fact, the CTW actually found the artwork hilarious and encouraged Dino. Two years passed, and in 1998, the Webby Awards recognized the Bert is Evil meme as the best weird web page online. Back then, this was a huge achievement, especially considering the scarcity of unorthodox websites online at the time. Before the Webby Awards, Dino really couldn't believe his luck. He had no idea that this creation would spawn such a cult-like following. And after the award, he truly felt like he was the king of the internet. In his mind, he was invincible. The CTW wasn't giving him any trouble at all, and the spread of his meme was getting more and more rapid. There was one downside, though. Because Dino was consistently getting thousands of new visitors on the site, the bandwidth started to get monstrously expensive. Since he was still a young man, he didn't have the reserves of cash needed to keep the website up. Dino had achieved his dreams with Fractal Cow, while it once began as a microscopic free time project and turned into fame, recognition, and status beyond belief. He had everything except a big paycheck to fund it all. Sadly, in December 1998, Dino posted the following statement on the site. Over the past two years, Bird is Evil has been the highest hitting part of FractalCow.com. We have received tons of mail, both negative and positive. We have been featured on other websites, radio shows, TV shows, and newspapers the world over. We received countless awards, including the Webby Award for Weirdest Site of 1998. The support from all of you has been tremendous. Thank you. All this exposure has generated so many heads that we can no longer afford to keep the site up. SimpleNet.net, the server FractalCal.com is sitting on, is now charging us $200 a month to keep the site up instead of $20. They say this is due to the fact that we are using their resources too much. Bird is Evil alone generates an average of 8,000 hits a day. SimpleNet.net can no longer host Bird is Evil at the low-cost plan we have maintained for close to three years. So FractalCal.com has to bid farewell to Bert. From now on, Bird is Evil will be sitting on mirror servers. Since we put up the site for adoption, we have received over 60 mirror sites. 
Thank you so much for all the support. To the other people who have offered mirrors, I'll put up your links later. We seem to have enough, but feel free to list them on search engines as a registered Bird is Evil mirror. Even if my hosting fees were for unlimited bandwidth, my host started charging me in the thousands because the site got classified as a high traffic domain. I had to close it down and offer the whole site to other people as a zip file they can use to start mirrors. Bird is Evil effectively became a proto meme. Fractal cows spread across the entire web like an infection before going viral was even a thing. Within a few short weeks, there were countless mirrors which Ignacio kept indexed on his version of the site for as long as it was feasible. There were so many replicas that the original site morphed, and as it became widely distributed, some mirrors added so much new content that they became entirely unique websites of their own. With so many replicas spreading online, there were bound to be fans that would take things too far, and that's exactly what happened. Right after 9-11, an anonymous fan of Dino superimposed Burt with Al-Qaeda founder Osama bin Laden. This in itself didn't cause the primary controversy, but it's definitely the spark that inspired it. During a rally in Bangladesh, a protester had printed a sign using the anonymous fan's photoshopped picture of Bert. The protester did this without knowing the satirical western context of the history of the original image. Almost immediately, a router's photojournalist took a picture of the sign and that's when the storm of outrage consumed the CTW. News outlets jumped on the story in 9-11's wake. The kind and naive Sesame Street character everyone knew as Bert was no more. He'd been replaced with a terrorist sympathizer who inspired the 9-11 attacks. At least this was the mindset of the public at the time. Every mainstream news agency talked about the photograph and how it contributed to the war. CNN, the BBC, ABC News, the New York Times, I'm not kidding when I say all prevalent news agencies. This was the first time in history that the internet was sensationalized by mainstream media and it was definitely quite the spectacle to behold. Obviously with this much negative publicity, the folks at the Children's Television Workshop decided they couldn't be in on the joke any longer. They quickly prepared a statement to defend themselves against the public outcry. The statement read, Sesame Street has always stood for a mutual respect and understanding. We're outraged that our characters would be used in this unfortunate and distasteful manner. This is not at all humorous. The people responsible for this should be ashamed of themselves. We are exploring all legal options to stop this abuse and any similar abuses in the future. In response to the formal statement, Dino immediately shut down his website and called for all mirror sites to do the same. However, nothing can be erased from the internet, especially something that had become so notorious and widespread. On October 11, 2001, Dino posted the following message on Fractal Cal. I have taken down the Bird is Evil site from my server. I would like to thank Sesame Workshop for their patience and restraint all these years. I implore all fans and mirror site hosts of Bird is Evil to stop the spread of this site too. This is not selling out. I was not bullied. I am not being a pussy. I am doing this because I feel this has gotten too close to reality and I choose to be responsible enough to stop it right here. I want to thank all the fans who laughed with me all these years. Thank you to the mirror sites who continued the legacy beyond what I started. Thanks to Victor J. Zyland, N. Ross Gilbert, Wout Rangers, and Jasper Holshoff Pohl, who helped me build the site back in the early days. Thank you to Tiffany Schlein and the Webby Awards team for believing in me. Many thanks to the press who have helped me get my site noticed, specifically the now defunct magazines Internet Underground and The Web. Thank you to Lloyd Kaufman and the Tromaville.com staff who brought Fractal Cow back to life. I hope my other projects will receive an ounce of the appreciation you all showed Bird is Evil. Immediately after this post, Dino was bombarded with hate from his community, so in response he wrote another statement specifically addressing these people. In response to all of you who have emailed me criticizing my decision to kill the site, I post this email. I really appreciate you writing to me. In all honesty, it was a very hard decision to make. I literally killed a part of myself today. If Fractal Cow represents different parts of my psyche, I just killed the rebellious part of my soul today, and lay of that part that dictates to be responsible. My main motivation in killing the site is that I hope it helps stop the idea from germinating any more into the mainstream. I fear that it may destroy the character's credibility with children. I cannot allow that to happen. I myself grew up on Sesame Street and was an important part of my childhood. Bird is Evil and his following has always been contained and distanced from the big media. This issue throws it out in the open and with articles, emails, and news websites referring to it, children are bound to hear about it. I think I had to draw the line there. I hate part of myself right now. You actually are giving a voice to that rebellious punk of me. I appreciate you doing that, but the punk boy has to succumb for the moment. Don't worry, there's more where it came from. After this last statement to his followers, Dino did what every other human being does. He got on with life. Dino grew up, decided to go to college, and settled into his own version of a stable adult life. After university, he went into the video game industry, and while working at Electronic Arts, his job was to ensure that the user interfaces in games like Dead Space and Dante's Inferno were passable. At the present moment, Dino works on social VR at Facebook to support his family. On some days, he even likes to watch Sesame Street with his daughter, presumably getting a kick out of his major past influence on the world. In my opinion, the story of Dino Ignacio is a cautionary tale about what to post online because once something's on the web, it will never be erased. However, in this specific instance, I would also have to say that it's a blessing that it was not erased completely. For if it had been, I wouldn't have been able to make a video discussing this unique story. Speaking of that, I guess it's time for me to share the contents of Fractal Cow. More specifically, the Bird is Evil ARG page. In this section of the video, I'm going to completely divulge the entire Bird is Evil website, so prepare yourself. 
Interview with Best Buddy Ernie. In this section of the website, an interviewer is asking Ernie several questions in regards to Bert. What I gather from these statements is that it appears Bert has some type of personality disorder which causes him to drastically change his persona. We'll start off with the ARG summary and then listen to the transcript. The following is an interview with Ernie, best friend, roommate, and confidant to Bert. Some scenes deemed explicit by the editor have been cut out, but it still remains graphic. Reader discretion is again stressed. Interviewer. How long have you known Bert? Ernie. Oh, over 20 years now. Have you always lived together? Yes, for as long as I remember. How has it been living with him? It has been really difficult. Difficult. Can you elaborate? Well, you see, um, Bert kind of has a dual personality during the show. He's a pushover and very geeky, but when the camera stops rolling, he becomes a raging maniac. Maniac? How do you mean? Well, he hurts me and stuff. Why do you still live with him then? He says if I leave the apartment, he'll kill me and Rubber Ducky. He can't possibly be serious. He is. He is very capable of this. Once me and Ducky tried to escape, he almost strangled me to death. Well, why does he force you to stay? I think he needs company, you know, when he overdoses and stuff. Also, he likes to touch me. Oh, here, here. Please stop crying. Are you okay now? <laughs> yes, please continue. You mentioned overdosing. Overdosing on what? Bird experiments with all kinds of stuff. LSD, speed, ecstasy, heroin, cocaine, cannabis. He taught me all the names. I hate him most when he's high. It's when he's high that he makes me do stuff. What kind of stuff? He makes me go to the pigeon shed and... What? Please, I can't talk anymore. I gotta go. The interview ends abruptly with Ernie hysterically shaking and in tears. We pursued no longer. This soul was already in too much pain. Interview with Muppet spokesperson Kermit the Frog. In this interview, Kermit gives us some information that might be useful in pinpointing where Bert's aggression stems from. The following is an interview with Kermit, reporter, correspondent, and Muppet spokesperson. Some scenes deemed explicit by the editor have been cut out, but it still remains graphic. Reader discretion is again stressed. Interviewer. How well do you know Bert? Kermit. I've known him for over 15 years now. Has he always been violent? Actually, no. I think it all started with the bottle caps. Could you explain? Well, he had this bottle cap collection, and one day he lost one. He was searching all over Sesame Street for it. Well, he went around raging, threatening to kill. He was so paranoid, he was blaming it on poor old Grover. He was shaking Grover around and beating him up. Then what? Well, good old Mr. Hooper found a solution. He got a bottle cap that looked exactly like the one Bert lost and gave it to him. He pretended that he found it. How often did these episodes of madness happen? Often after that. He would be caught stealing Maria's underwear. He tried to rape Prairie Dawn a few times. Prairie Dawn? She's one of the girl Muppets here in Sesame. Bert's affections of love were turned down by her a few times. Then Bert got violent. He would corner her into dark corners of the street and assault her. Bert is a really evil person. I wish he would be put in jail. Why have you made no actions towards this? He threatens to kill us. He has friends in a Colombian drug mafia, you know. He says if anyone reports, he's going to have them skinned alive. We are all scared. Interview with Elmo Monster In this interview, we discover how Elmo first came into contact with Bert. The following is an interview with Elmo, the cutest alleged heroin and cocaine addict. Some scenes deemed too explicit by the editor have been cut out, but it still remains very graphic. Reader discretion is advised. This interview was sent in by some guy named Azaziel and was reformatted by Snicker Furfoot Esquire. Interviewer. So Elmo, how long have you lived on Sesame Street? Elmo. Elmo guess it's been about eight years now. Elmo the newest one here. What was it like when you first moved here? Oh, it was really nice. Everyone was so nice to Elmo. It was like a dream. Then Elmo met Bert. Yes? Yes. Um, yeah? Uh-huh. What happened when you met Bert? Oh, sorry. Elmo been having trouble staying focused lately. This was later attributed to Elmo's drug abuse. Well, everyone has been telling Elmo to stay away from Bert. Elmo thought they were kidding, but they weren't. Not at all. When Elmo first met Bert, Bert pretended to be Elmo's friend. Bert showed Elmo around. Then Bert started to do mean things. Like what? One thing Bert liked to do was make special cookies for Cookie Monster. Cookie ate one during a taping. Cookies, his eyes got all googly and Cookie went berserk, shoving cookies into Cookie's mouth. Bert laughed the whole time. Bert said Bert did it a lot. That's horrible. What did you do? Nothing really. Elmo just thought it was a dumb joke. Then came the party. Party? Yes, Elmo's welcoming party. Bert started drinking and Bert... Dear God! Yeah, right there in front of everybody. After that, Elmo tried to stay away from Bert. Did it work? Not really. For a month or so, Bert still pestered Elmo to help Bert in Bert's pranks. One time Bert dragged Elmo along and told Forgetful Jones that Clementine, his wife, had died. It was awful. Poor Mr. Jones was in tears. After about five minutes, Mr. Jones would forget and Bert would do it again. This went on for hours. So what finally happened? Elmo told Bert Elmo didn't want to be Bert's friend anymore. 
Bert stayed pretty calm, looked Elmo right in the eye and said, Elmo was so scared. Elmo broke down into tears, too shaken to speak further. Elmo, you're a very brave little Muppet for doing this interview. I wish you luck. For some reason, this interview never made it to the papers. I attempted to track down the interviewer to ask him why, only to discover that he'd vanished a mere three days after the interview took place. Coincidence? Maybe. Shoot me up, Elmo. It appears that before there was Tickle Me Elmo, Shoot Me Up Elmo existed first. An unknown journalist elaborates in a post. Tickle Me Elmo is the devil's tool. Elmo has been exposed as a heroin and cocaine addict before. Now we expose him as the devil's messenger. The Tickle Me Elmo doll has caused greed, capitalism, pain, and war among the peoples of the world. It was the number one selling toy this past Christmas season. You ask yourself, why? What makes a stupid doll that says, ha ha he he, that tickles, be so coveted? The answer is in the back mass message of the doll. The devil hides his minions in cute disguises. Find out for yourself. Download the WAV file of the Elmo doll's voice with its speed reduced by 100% and played backwards. It says, What the fuck? Whoa, ho, ho, ho. If you don't believe us, find out for yourself. Paparazzi shot of Bert being a bad influence on Ernie. In this image, we can clearly see Bert and Ernie at a strip club. A paparazzo elaborates. We caught Bert dragging Ernie out of their apartment on Sesame Street and decided to follow them to where they were going. We were shocked to find the two in a girly bar. Bert was forcing Ernie to get lap dances from all the ladies. Poor Ernie went home crying. Prairie Dawn assaulted by Bert. In this image, we can clearly see Bert trying to force himself upon another Muppet. We get extra information from the site. Bert was caught trying to rape Prairie Dawn in the back side of Sesame. If it wasn't for Lewis, Prairie would have been killed. There have also been similar attempts on Betty Lou and Chloe. A picture from Ernie's photo album. In this picture, we can clearly see Bert smoking marijuana. We get extra information from the site. In this photo we borrowed from Ernie's photo album, we see Bert smoking marijuana. He was very active during the 70s and was once seen with famed mass murderer and lunatic Charles Manson. He was even rumored to have been with Manson and his cult during the murder of Sharon Tate. Underground Bert and Ernie audio recording. In this audio recording, we can hear Bert and Ernie speaking Dutch. Since I have no clue how to speak the language, I decided to ask my stepdad, who is Dutch, to translate the meaning. After hearing the translation, I honestly wish I hadn't asked him to go through with it. In this short audio clip, my stepdad described how the translation meant that Bert and Ernie were having gay sex. This realization honestly disturbed the hell out of me. Not because I'm homophobic or anything, but because two of my favorite childhood characters were apparently giving each other blowjobs and having anal intercourse. I'm going to play the audio now with the translation at the bottom. Seriously, prepare yourself. Klikken, Ernie. Klikken. Wat, wat, wat? Bert, ik heb een plannetje. Ja, ja, wat doe je, Ernie? Niet, niet doen. Zo doen, no, no, niet. Oh. Ja, ja, Ernie. Ja, ja, ja. Oh, ja. Wat lekker, How did Mr. Hooper really die? The untold story. It appears that there was more to Mr. Hooper's death than it would seem at first glance. If you're not familiar with Mr. Hooper, he was one of the first four human characters to appear in the Sesame Street television series. Sadly, in 1983, he made his last appearance. The following is the true account of the events leading to the death of Mr. Hooper, Sesame Street store owner and friend of Big Bird. Mr. Hooper died at the age of 68 of causes yet unexplained. We remember the episode of Sesame Street where Big Bird made a portrait of Mr. Hooper one day. Proud of his creation, Big Bird visited the old man's store only to find Maria and Bob there, but not Mr. Hooper. The two explain that Mr. Hooper had just died and Big Bird is boggled by the whole concept. The episode continues with Big Bird learning to cope with the death but never is it explained why and how Thaddeus D. Hooper died. Let us now uncover the truth behind this mystery. A week before the death of Mr. Hooper, the famed actor-comedian Richard Pryor guest starred on the show. It is a documented fact that Mr. Pryor was an avid user of crack cocaine. Intelligence sources have reason to believe that Bert was his supplier. The two have been photographed together. In fact, Bert is the cause of his addiction. Bert is responsible for the addictions of many other Muppets. Elmo to cocaine, Cookie Monster to weed, and Grover to acid, just to name a few. In fact, Forgetful Jones is a casualty of acid. Mr. Hooper caught the two shooting up behind the store and got mad. Hooper threatened to go to the police and said that he will not tolerate such evil hedonism so close to his humble store. Pryor snaps into a panic. You know the one he always does in the movies? Bert stays calm and says, here's some money, shut up. Insulted, Hooper shouts, I'll never take your dirty drug money, you freak. Get out of here before I call the cops. Bert responds, we'll leave, but if you tell, you die. Bert walks away calmly while Pryor is still in a state of panic. Intercepted email correspondence with Jeffrey Dahmer. In this instance, we see a rare conversation between Bert and Jeffrey Dahmer. It appears that the main motive behind this chat is to use Bert to help transfer human meat for Jeffrey's personal consumption and usage. 
to Jeffrey Dahmer from Burt. Subject, greetings. At 11.37 a.m. on 11.26.94. Hello, Jeffrey. Remember me? Bert. We met once at the Evil People Convention. How's it been hanging? I've been busy myself. Are you still doing a lot of carving? How's the meat this season? Bert. To Bert from Jeffrey Dahmer. Subject, re-greetings. At 8.31 p.m. on 11.27.94. Bert, of course I remember you. You were the one who gave me that recipe for infant soup. Thanks a million. I've been fine. The season's been great, lots of fresh sweet meat. I love kids. By the way, if I remember right, you have a children-related occupation. Do you think you could source me some seven-year-olds? Jeffrey. Subject, kids. At 9.43 p.m. on 11.27.94. Jeff, sure I can. How many do you need? There are lots of kids here, nice and plump. I'll send you a sample soon. Bert. Re-kids. Attachment, butchering.txt. At 7.20 p.m. on 11.30.94. Wow, the leg you sent me was excellent. I want more. Can I get some by the bulk? Also attached is a file on how to prepare the meat. This way you can keep the meat in prime condition. Jeffrey. Subject, sweet meat. At 6.24 p.m. on 11.31.94. Jeff, thanks for the text file you sent. It was very informative. I'll make sure the next batch of meat I send over will be prepped this way. Bert. The lost segment from the Pamela Lee honeymoon video. In this image, we can clearly see Bert and Pamela Lee having sexual relations. The anonymous poster gives us context on the picture. During the honeymoon of Pamela and Tommy Lee, the couple went off to the desert to film themselves in a torrid orgy with Bert, who was an old drug buddy of Tommy's. It was actually Bert who stole the tape and distributed copies of it. Bert edited out the segments that showed him in the video to avoid his incrimination. Tommy and Pamela continued to deny their association with the Muppet due to the fear that he might hurt them. Monolith from Easter Island Bert apparently made his mark in the years 1250 AD through 1500 AD, where he terrified the Rapa Nui people of Easter Island. As a result, the ancient native tribe who inhabited Easter Island paid tribute to their tormentor. A monolith found on the edge of Easter Island known to the natives as the one that devours or the evil one has been found to have an uncanny resemblance to Bert. This image was sent in by Wautomatic. He allegedly took the image during his last holiday. This photo was further proof of Bert's evil dating back to the dawn of civilization. In the Jerry Springer Show There's apparently an episode of the Jerry Springer Show that was completely removed because Bert couldn't stop harassing the other guests. This shot was taken from a Dutch episode of The Jerry Springer Show, which was, according to the newspapers, banned from network television stations in the USA. It appears that Bert is harassing innocent people of the opposite sex. Being confronted with this fact on national television, Bert then attempts to rape two girls just hours after the show was recorded. The Dennis Rodman Connection First Kim Jong-un and now Bert. Dennis Rodman certainly loves hanging out with the most dangerous kinds of individuals. Though it has been long speculated that Dennis Rodman and Bert were old friends, no proof has validated this claim until the recent photograph. It is assumed that Rodman's evil as I want to be attitude can be attributed to his relations to the Muppet. Bert has also been caught dressed in drag at Hooper's store late at night. Document from FBI Alien Dossier I always had a feeling that Bert was unworldly. This photo taken from the Aliens Dossier of the FBI shows the images of the two most aggressive aliens ever encountered on this planet. The Zeta Reticuli, allegedly responsible for the cattle mutilations, Ebola virus, the bubonic plague, and the nuclear age. And then the Zeta Berticuli, allegedly responsible for infomercials, the deformed frogs of Minnesota, and Nonazinal 9. It is a well-supported theory that Bert may be an alien or a Muppet Zeta hybrid. Innocent bystander or conspirator? Just like the babushka lady and the umbrella man, Bert could have something to do with the assassination of JFK. Perhaps he was there to make sure everything went off without a hitch. In this rarely seen photo, we see Bert standing on the sidelines a few seconds before the assassination of John F. Kennedy. We have sources who claim that Lee Harvey Oswald and Bert were friends in Korea, though no proof directly points to Bert's involvement in this ghastly shard of history. We wouldn't be too surprised if he was. A rarely seen photo of Hitler with his favorite general. Potential shared ancestry with Nazi soldiers? Perhaps Bert is just another in a long line of heinous criminals who tormented innocent people. During World War II, General Bartholomew Kiefer III led the SS in the burning of the Reichstag. He is known to be one of Hitler's most diabolical generals. We have reason to believe that he is either a clone or an ancestor of Bert. One of the few photos of Bert taken with Mr. Hooper. This is just another piece of circumstantial evidence that gestures towards Bert's involvement with Mr. Hooper's death. This photo was taken only days before the death of Mr. Hooper. Bert's evil intent so obviously emanates from his eyes. We think he did it. What do you think? The Root of MJ's Evil if we plug in this information, it becomes very apparent where Michael Jackson got his sick hobby from. Our investigators recently uncovered this old photograph of a young Michael Jackson standing with Bert who was fondling his pelvic area. 
It is now clear where Michael Jackson's pedophilia stems from. Burt molested him as a child. He is only releasing frustrations and fears that have welled inside his mind for years. In an interview with ex-wife Lisa Marie Presley, she confessed to us that Michael used to make her do the pigeon naked while he sat across the room and watched. We tried to interview the King of Pop about this, but all he could say was, I am a gentleman. Bird at Woodstock. Funny enough, my grandpa attended the Woodstock Festival when he was younger. Maybe he saw Bert in the crowd. I'll make sure to ask him later. Here's a photo of the mass hysteria at Woodstock. We see a man who looks a lot like Bert. Though nothing is evil about Woodstock, this photo at least proves that Bert is not wholesome. O.J. Simpson. This email was leaked from an FBI informant. Apparently, O.J. Simpson had a little help from the kingpin of Sesame Street. Dear Sir, in close you will find a couple of snapshots of Bert conspiring with that infamous ex-football player, ex-movie star, ex-husband, and ex-murderer O.J. Simpson. It's a well-kept secret that Bert was actually part of O.J.'s defense team during the first trial and was also the only person in whom O.J. fully confided. Interestingly enough, photograph 2 was taken exactly 10 minutes before the murders took place. Also, did you know that yellow lint was found at the crime scene? It's true. It was Exhibit 156A during the first trial. I know I am putting you and myself at risk for giving you all this information, but the truth must not be stopped. What are a few casualties for the good of man and Muppet kind? Use this information well and good luck. Respectfully, Victor J. Zoylin. The Jimmy Swagger Scandal This is definitely very shady. However, after researching information on Don Schneider, it doesn't surprise me that something like this would happen back in the late 80s. This is a photo of Bert and our favorite televangelist Jimmy Swagger caught in the act, doing the pigeon, taken back in 1987. This shot was long withheld from the public to protect the children's television workshop. It was recently sent to us by Jim Baker. Unabombert. Even when faced with a horrific tragedy, television networks have no qualms about hiding the fact that Burt was the Unabomber. Previously unreleased, this was the original composite sketch of the Unabomber made from witness information, but was redrawn because it was kind of funny looking. In connection with the current FBI investigations into Burt, this original sketch was pulled out again because of the striking resemblance to the Muppet. The case has been reopened and further developments will be posted on this page. For more info on the Unabomber, go to CNN.com. Bert and the KKK. If Bert was the founder of the KKK, I wouldn't be surprised. If one of his ancestors was a Nazi soldier, what would stop another family member from pursuing eugenics in a different fashion? It has long been rumored that Bert was part of the Ku Klux Klan. Latest evidence shows that he is part of the Klan, but more surprisingly, some evidence points to the possibility that he is a founding member. The Klan's pointed cowl was actually patterned after Bert's head. In these photographs, Bert is seen at the burning of the crosses ritual. Classified documents of Mars surveillance. I honestly have no words for this one. And yet you rose a thesis. <laughs> According to this leaked email, Bert is somehow able to time travel and teleport to an ancient civilization on Mars. This could potentially be a warning to prevent humankind from pursuing space travel. Bert obviously doesn't want the human race on his interstellar turf. Dear sir, I was recently told of your Bert is evil investigation and thought that you might be interested in the attached image. Understand that this image comes to me from a trusted friend who worked at Jet Propulsion Laboratories between 1975 and 1992. I have no reason to distrust this friend, but he wishes to remain anonymous for fear of retribution. On July 25, 1976, this picture, framed 35A72, of the Cydonia region of Mars at 41 degrees north latitude, 9.5 degrees longitude, was taken by Viking Orbiter 1. The mission was to identify potential landing sites for the Viking Lander 2. As you can see, this landform bears a striking resemblance to Evil Burt. This photograph was suppressed by higher-ups in our government. What conclusions can we draw from this image? First of all, the only life forms that we know of that developed on Mars were single-celled organisms. Considering the immensity of this formation, 2.5 kilometers long by 2.0 kilometers wide by 0.04 kilometers tall, it becomes immediately apparent that the logistics of single-celled organisms building such a stone monument to Bert are mind-boggling. Why it would make the construction of the pyramids at Giza look like a sandcastle building contest. According to the facts as I have presented them, ancient Martians by the billions were obviously enslaved by their Burt worshipping overlords for this project. But why? Is it a mute testament to the devotion of a long dead race to the evil Burt, whom they must have worshipped as a god? Is it a warning of some kind, as if to tell humanity that we are not welcome in space, that we should go no further? And why Burt? We have no record of a Burt before 1969, and yet here he is immortalized on a rock formation believed to date back to sometime between Earth's Precambrian era and the late mezzanine level. Did Bert somehow time travel and convince the ancient Martians to do his bidding? Is it possible that a visionary Martian microbe looked into the future, saw Bert, and was so affected by the evil images that washed over him that his single-celled Nostradamus was compelled to put his visions to rock? I know not, but clearly spending a lot of money on costly Mars probes to investigate this further is warranted. Cordially, in Ross Gilbert.
far as pre-9-11 goes, the bird is evil meme completely dissipated from public consciousness. I literally scoured the YouTube dune lands to try to find any news reports that talked about the controversy. However, I was only able to find one unknown Dutch news program that covered the incident. The footage was uploaded 13 years ago on February 29, 2008. Obviously in extremely bad quality. I guess our friends at the CTW succeeded in covering up the entire incident. It's not far-fetched to say that this news broadcast is the only proof that exists confirming the past disturbance. I implore everyone that watches this video to share the information I've been able to dig up from the past. In my opinion, it's a good history lesson that none of us were ever taught. If you were a teenager back in the early 2000s, make sure to leave a comment describing some information that I may have accidentally left out. As of 2021, there aren't any videos discussing the bird is evil meme aside from this one. I encourage everyone that watched this video to make their own segment on the meme. People need to think back and remember this historic occasion. Thank you to everyone that watched this video. Every single person that leaves a like and leaves a comment inspires me to make more videos like this one. I hope you all have a fantastic day.